So we're over here in the corner of your yard. The chickens are behind us, and this is just an irrigation system you have subbed into the ground. And yes. then you have this, which is probably coupled into your irrigation line that goes into your vertical gardens. So this is the, the main water. This is the backflow preventer okay. that goes to all of the irrigation in the property. Okay. Now this is what this is called. It's an easy flow injection system. They use this type of technology at places like Disneyland and Disney World, golf courses. Okay. Uh, big agriculture is starting to use these as well. Um, but basically what it does is it has this black line will bring the water into the tank and then this clear line and you can see it too it has it's it's basically a clear line it's it's sort of brown right now because it's, it's, it's dusty but well it's primed inside there is the organic fertilizer okay so and, the water comes in the black line mm -hmm. and then the fertilizer and the water mixture comes out the clear line and it goes back into the main line of your irrigation and you had this valve here that can shut it off if you wanted to if you need to do that but these are great you know a homeowner can install them you need to have the coupling mm -hmm. um, and then what's really great about these is they have these little ball valves here so when you go to service them all you need to do this is a key this is an element here it compresses that fitting and you can I'm gonna turn that because I don't want to get anybody wet and you can see that fertilizer comes out of there mm -hmm. And it injects the water in here. It's filtered back in. So every once in a while, you may want to rinse this out. I typically rinse this filter. It just pops off and you snap it back on. I rinse it when I fill it. Now, what's interesting is you start to pour this out. You'll notice that it's really not that thick. And then all of a sudden, you can see the yeah. color get darker. What's unique about these is it will inject basically the same amount of fertilizer into your uh, plants in your landscape when it's full as when it's nearly empty. Hmm. It stays very, very consistent. Just, it just regulates it. It regulates consistently it. over time. Well, what happens is the fertilizers are going to be molecular. They're much heavier. So that'll settle in the bottom where those tubes are. I see. Now, all you need to do, and this is a key element. Now we need to prime this system. So you want to make sure you put the key on compress that back mm -hmm. and then you turn this on and what you're wanting to do is make sure that there's no air in this line okay if there's now there, you can tell it's you coming out solid yeah. turn it off. if there's air in that line it can really damage the PVC so you want to make sure that you purge the it's air like, out it of it like a doctor pumping air out of the syringe before he injects it exactly and then just put it back on there turn it back on set it back in the valve box mm -hmm. I some people had asked well I've got a valve box can I put it in there I don't really recommend you putting it in with anything else because it can be heavy sometimes your hands can get wet if that slips and drops on a valve it's yeah. definitely gonna break put your something. valves next door or something exactly or put that in its own box cool. and here at our property we've got a basically half an acre a lot of gardens and uh, even the lawn the trees it all goes through the system uh, depending on the season, it's about once every four to six months we fill that with an organic fertilizer. And the last time that I was here, you didn't have the chicken coop completed. We got to show the folks the new chicken coop. This is it. You got this beautiful pecan tree above us that is putting pecans everywhere. Everywhere I look, there's pecans ready to be harvested. And we've been harvesting a ton. Um, and the chickens love these. They do, but I need to break them up first for them. Yeah, they sure. can't peck through there. My favorite thing to do is to grab like 20, 30 pecans and a rock and go in the coop and just hang with the chickens and crush them and let them eat the, the result. You know? they, they love that. And the chicken coop, the way it's designed, the roof is sort of on an angle. We've got a big part of the tree that hangs over. So most of the pecans that I harvest, I actually harvest from the back side of the coop because they naturally roll off on That's that cool. side. And uh, talk to us about the wood and how you built this coop and then you have dragon fruit growing up in well the wood was all salvaged uh pretty much everything from the telephone poles when the 
utility company was here replacing telephone poles. You were I buying asked the them. old poles. They gave them to me. That's awesome. They didn't want to haul them off. Yeah. So they gave them to me. The panels was actually, I worked with a really fantastic company from Atlanta a couple of years ago that did these pallet walls um, for a conference they were doing at one of the big resorts here in town. Okay. And we designed our vertical gardens and placed in sort of window inserts into these pallet walls for this three-day presentation that was going on. And after three days, they don't have any other use for them. So the guy says, you know, there was a big dumpster there. He's like, hey, <laughs> you can you use these? Or, you know, I'm not, I'm going to throw them in the dumpster. So I was like, I didn't know what I was going to do with them. And the whole thing was at first ended up just being a screen wall because behind this is pallets of soil. Your all storage. The, all my work area over there. Yeah. And um, so I ended up deciding, you know what, I'm going to build a, a coop with this had enough panels to do it and I like to really think things through and engineer things we've got the gravity feeders made out of piping made out of PVC <clears throat> that's and, so cool and it has a, a basically a Y onto it it's elevated enough where we get the flood irrigation none of the food gets wet mm -hmm. it's high enough that the, that the chickens can easily get to it there's four of them um, that I fill up from the outside of the coop. Let's see. Basically, these four can these four tubes will hold one 50-pound bag. Wow. So I only need to feed the chickens, you know, once every month and a half or so. Yeah. And I don't have to mess with it. And as they eat from the bottom, just it just down. will drop down. That's great. The other thing on the on the side over here. Uh, because a lot of times when my wife's coming out, she's kind enough to cook breakfast for us in the morning. She'll come out to harvest the eggs, which we have on this side. So you're going to show us where the chickens lay. You've got the coop set up so that this part where they lay the eggs is closest to the house. Exactly. And what's, <laughs> this is one thing that I did have to buy except for, you know, I bought the piping and stuff. Mm -hmm. This is, um, you can find this online, it's called the best nesting box. Really? And this was, this thing was probably about 150 bucks wow. for this, which was expensive. But to me, the price of things like that, if it really works, it's worth it. Yeah. And what's great about it, you can see here. So the eggs just roll down. The hens slanted here. The hens will jump up in here and it is slanted. They'll roll out of there. But what's really important is this material. Yeah. It, uh, cause the, the hens will lay there and they will poop in the nesting box wherever they're at. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting about this material, as that manure dries, they'll be there scratching around. It will break up and it falls through. Hmm. And the chickens enjoy laying on, on this? They're fine with that. It's comfortable for them. And then the eggs just lay out, uh, roll out of here. What's really important to note, if you are harvesting eggs, um, the cleaner you can get the eggs, the mm -hmm. better off you are. Mm -hmm. When the hen lays the egg, they secrete a water-soluble, basically, film over it. Mm -hmm. If you ever see a uh, hen that's just laid that egg, it's actually wet. It is. And that is that water-soluble seal. Mm -hmm. It's basically a protection. If they, if there's manure on that, you need to wash that egg. Mm -hmm. Now that egg is no longer protected and it needs to be refrigerated. It's susceptible to salmonella. So a system like this is really important because we never, we we never refrigerate these eggs. Yeah, they'll keep for a long time if they're clean like that. Exactly. The other thing that's that's great too is close to my water, I have this, um, which just is the same piping. It goes into a 90 and inside there, there's about eight little stainless steel nipples that the hens will peck out, the water will drip out, so they always get fresh, clean water. That's we had amazing. the containers before that would always get full of dirt and yeah. everything else. And maybe they get algae in them. So this way here, I have an end cap onto it in case that anything ever happened or get really dirty, I can mm. open up the end piece and just flush through the water and clean it. But I just fill this up and even during the summer- Just I'm, pour the water right inside here. I just take this cap off and I just filled it up yesterday. And what happens is once the water gets down to this point, I'll start noticing the chickens during the day, they'll be squawking more <laughs> because they're not getting as much water. They're talking to you. They'll talk to you and let you know. And I just bring the garden hose over, fill it up, 
you want to keep this on so insects and mosquitoes and stuff can't have access to it. Right. Um, but it's just been a really great way. Um, then inside the coop, you know, I'm able to, I have my compost bins, I've moved over here closer mm -hmm. because we'll feed them food scraps and things excess from the garden. Um, plus when we when we clean out the the coop we'll put in sawdust from the shop we'll put in sand for them yeah uh diet tenacious earth and um and then once i clean that out i've got partially composted wood shavings mm -hmm. i've got the manure any kind of food scraps that are in there that i can put directly into the compost or maybe into the mulch of your fruit trees or anything exactly I also have a manure spreader that what what I'll do is I fill that up and it's just the round barrel and roll that through the grass hmm. to put the excess because with this system we do get quite a bit of compost that we like to use right here on the property absolutely I love it and this looks so rustic and incredible and it's very sturdy you've done a great job making this thing it barely even moves or shakes yeah it's been it was a fun project to do and and it's always fun when you when you find things yeah. that you can repurpose um, but and make them new again and make them new again but still keep them aesthetic where mm. you know they look good in your landscape I've uh, have a beautiful wife I've been married for nearly 35 years Wow and she lets me do a lot of these things with that with that one caveat is yes you can do it it just needs to look good what's one of your guys' secrets of being together 35 you said 35 years uh, in June, it'll be 35 years. Wow. Uh, I was married quite young, and um, I think it's really just being a friend and communicating and letting each other grow. Um, because as humans, I think that's the thing. We're always learning, we're always changing and growing. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just being friends mm -hmm. and communication. That's great.